Today on Screen It or Stream It, I get to say whatever I want. You can? We can. That's right. We're starting our new season in our new set with no affiliation with the city of Lufkin. Really? Yep, that's right. So I can say... <coughs> yeah, yeah, you can say that. And... <coughs> well, let's not get carried away. And so... <coughs> let's start the show. All right, so our new set's gonna be a work in progress for a while, but it's gonna be fun because it's all ours and I love it. We got our sign though, so we're good. <laughs> All right. So Halloween is fast approaching. Yes. A little too fast. Yes. It's kind of weird. Anyways, uh, I want to talk about scary movies. I love scary movies. Like Kazam with Shaq? Well, that's a completely different type of terrifying, actually. Uh, it's not, <laughs> not, not, not the scary I was going for. Oh, I meant the acting, but yeah. Uh, well, yeah, me too. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to talk about... Uh, some scary movies I've seen recently, some I've seen not so recently, mm. and I would really like to talk about movies that maybe most people haven't seen, haven't come across, mm -hmm. and give some recommendations for things to, to watch on Halloween. I have myself been indulging in some scary flicks that I've been able to find, and I will join you in this. Woot. What uh, you got? So the first one I want to talk about is Vast of Night. Which is actually, uh, I'm sorry, it's the Vast of Night. It's actually an Amazon original, so oh, you have to have Amazon I have not to see seen it. it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it is a sci-fi movie more than it is really a horror movie, mm -hmm. but it is the first movie in a very, very, very long time that I've seen that actually like made the hairs on my arm Ooh. stand up. It gave me chills at certain points. It is science fiction by nature, but it's also extremely creepy in its own right the only uh, the only problem I can see with the movie is the movie feels very cinematic to me it feels like an 80s if you're a fan of like close encounters of the third oh, kind yeah. or any of those like old 80s sci-fi back when you know we used to do things like character development and story and acting and all those things that we don't get anymore oh. well, so this movie does that and Unfortunately, in today's world, that means a slower pace that a lot of people, I think, would have a hard time with. So if you're not going to have the patience to sit and watch and wait for the characters to develop, then maybe not be for you. Uh, but if you are, I think the payoff is awesome. I love it. It's one of the, like I said, very cinematic mm -hmm. things. Uh, the basic story is that there is this uh, boy, um, he's probably late teens, early 20s. Mm -hmm. in 1960s America and he is a radio DJ does the night show uh, and also follows a young girl who's supposed to be 16 and of course being a movie I think she's like actually 22 or 23 <laughs> but she's supposed to be like 16 or 17 and she is the switchboard operator for the uh, old telephone system she oh, actually yeah, unplugs yeah, yeah. and plugs the wires in and it follows them around town as they kind of do some things and as they're heading to their job. And he works like the late shift and does like the night show. And she also works the late shift. So they walk to town together. And she begins picking up weird signals via the phone lines. And she begins to hear things and get emergency calls from people that are hanging up on her. And the radio station begins to also break up. And these weird signals begin coming through the radio line, or the airwaves over the radio. So she calls him and he's very inquisitive by nature anyways and so the two of them go out on this like little adventure around town trying to figure out where is this coming from and what's happening and you have no idea and then as the story progresses it becomes more involved and you you get more characters and those characters may have had you know I've heard this before and let me tell you the story of it and the, it just keeps getting creepier and creepier and creepier and the funny part is or the best part is that there's it takes like 30 minutes before they get to the actual light radio station it's him talking to people interacting with everyone in town and if you didn't know it was like science fiction or what it, it's not creepy at all mm. and then it just you get a little creep and then the creep builds and builds and builds and builds and it's in 
it's just really good. And to me, it felt like good old-fashioned filmmaking. I love a good tease on something when they just start very slowly, like it's coming, it's coming, and, and oh, you get the anticipation, it makes it so much better. <laughs> well, even in this one, I mean, I don't think it takes you very long to figure out, well, oh, they're hitting at this. But you never know, like, they're hinting at this, but is it really this, or is it this, or are they gonna, is it, is it, you know, is it gonna be one of those, aha, we made you think, like, you just never know until, <laughs> until it gets there. Um, it had a couple of problems. Uh, I mean, it, it was a like straight to Amazon one, so you have to have Amazon Prime to watch it. Yeah. But other than that, I mean, it has uh, like the pacing's a little slower. I actually enjoyed that. Um, it's a good just sit down in an evening and watch movie. Um, so slow like The Shape of Water, or slow like Master and Commander: The Far Side of the World. N- well, no, it is not four hours long, so it can't be <laughs> slow like Master and Commander. But uh, no, it's just and again, it, to me, it wasn't even slow. Right. Uh, it was just character development. But as far as, hey, let's get the plot going, the plot doesn't really get going until you get to know the characters and like the characters, which, again, is good cinematography. It's good right. filmmaking. It's good storytelling. <laughs> but we don't do that anymore. No. Um, <laughs> the, if there's one downside, I would say, uh, to this, there are some like CGI moments in it that are kind of um. subpar But they are very few and far between. Um, This is going to be like my number one recommendation because, like I said, even though it's not an actual horror movie like straight up, it's more science fiction, it reminds me of those, you take something like Aliens, right? Or Mm -hmm. Alien or Aliens. Love. Which you could very neatly fit into like the sci-fi genre and the horror genre. Mm -hmm. I think, again, this one leans more towards sci-fi, but as far as just creepiness and like, ugh, like it it does that and did that to me way better than anything I've seen in a long time. 